Okay, so this is my run through on the solutions to the polar integral problems. Um, so the first one says find the area that is the closed region bounded by the polar graph of r equals square root of 3 plus cosine theta. Okay, so we got to get a little bit of a, an idea of what's going on here with this graph. And I'm going to build a small table here with theta and r. And we're going to pick some principal points for theta. We'll use 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So when theta is 0, we get 3 plus the cosine of 0, which is going to be 3 plus 1, um, the square root of that, right? So that's going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. Um, the second one is square root of 3 plus cosine of pi over 2. So that's just going to be the square root of 3. Uh, pi gets me square root of 3 plus the cosine of pi. So that should work out as the square root of 2. Uh, three, square root of 3 times the cosine of 3 pi over 2. Gets me back to the square root of 3. And 2 pi is going to be 3 plus cosine of 2 pi, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So kind of interpreting that in a graph, right? This means when theta is 0, I'm out here at 2. When theta is at pi over 2, I'm at the square root of 3, which is like between 1 and 2, closer to... Um, what you call it, closer to 2. When I'm at pi, I'm at the square root of 2. That's also between 1 and 2, but it's closer to 1. Um, 3 pi over 2 is going to have me between 1 and 2, closer to 3. And then I return to this point. So without too much thinking, um, I think I'm getting something that looks roughly like this. I, I'm not exactly sure, but that's a pretty good estimate from the data that I have. I could dig a little further and see if things are going out and in and all that, but I um, got a pretty good idea. Uh, the area formula for an integral is 1 half, and I want this whole thing. So I want to go from 0 to 2 pi times r squared, so that's going to be times the square root of 3 plus cosine theta squared d theta. So that's going to be half from 0 to 2 pi of 3 plus cosine theta d theta, right? Because I'm positive all the way through, so I'm not too worried about having to deal with <clears throat> negatives or absolute values or anything like that in this problem. Um, so the problem is, is the half, and if I look, this thing is symmetric, right? So if I take the part of it from 0 to pi, right, cosine theta d theta, right, well, that's half of the whole, right? So that means that this is half of this. So that's going to give me a correct answer. That's going to be the answer B for the problem. All right, so you might have to think through the symmetry there a little bit, but I think we have a correct answer there. Okay, so let's take a look at number two. Okay, so for problem number two, it says the area of the region enclosed by the polar curve r is equal to 1 minus cosine theta, right? So I want r is equal to 1 minus cosine theta. I'm going to build my table of values like I did here before. Um, when theta is 0, I get 1 minus the cosine of 0, which is going to be 0. At pi over 2, I'm getting 1 minus cosine pi over 2, which is going to be 1. 
at pi, I get one minus the cosine of pi, which is gonna be two. Three pi over two gets me one minus the cosine of three pi over two, which brings me back to one. And at two pi, I'm back to one minus the cosine of two pi, which would be zero. So if I build a rough sketch of this, I'm at zero, zero. Pi over two gets me out to one. Uh, pi gets me out to two, right? Three pi over two takes me out to one again, and then I'm back here. So I'm kind of getting one of these heart-shaped things. Okay, so area here is going to be um, one half from zero to two pi of one minus cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna recognize right off the bat is that this is symmetric. So I'm just gonna find the area of that and get rid of the half here. So that's where I go from zero to two pi to zero to pi d theta. And now I can expand that binomial. So it's gonna give me one minus two cosine theta plus uh, cosine squared theta d theta. So the one's not my problem and neither is the two cosine theta. If you dig in a little bit in a uh, the trig uh, identities, you get that this can become one half. So you have to look that one up a little bit. One half times one plus cosine of two theta d theta, which now I kind of move things around a bit here. This goes one plus a half, so that's gonna be three halves, minus two cosine theta, plus one half cosine two theta d theta. Okay, so I'm gonna pause for a second and get myself some room to work. All right, so you can see here at the bottom, I have the place where I left off. Um, so let's go up to the top here. Um, this now becomes, uh, let's see, that's gonna give me three halves theta minus two sine theta plus, and then the half and the two are gonna cancel each other out. So that's just gonna be sine of two theta and that's all when theta goes from zero to pi. So at pi, I get three pi over two minus two times, well sine of pi is zero, plus sine of two pi is also gonna be zero, minus zero minus the sine of zero is zero, plus the sine of zero is zero. So this just simply works out to be three pi over two, which is answer C. All right, so let's look at problem number three. Three says, what is R equals sine of two theta, right? So what is the area of the region enclosed by the polar curve R equals sine of two theta? Uh, when zero is less than theta is less than pi over two. So they're giving me the bounds of integration. So I just had to apply the formula. Area is going to be one half, the integral from zero to pi over two of sine squared of two theta, t theta. Okay, so I have to use another one of the trig identities. So this is going to be zero to pi over two. The sine squared now becomes one half times one minus the cosine of two times the inside, so that's gonna be four theta d theta. Okay, so I can bring this out as a fourth here, zero to pi over two of one minus cosine of four theta d theta. So this is gonna become one fourth times theta 
minus one fourth sine of four theta. Okay. Okay, so that should give me, this is from zero to pi over two, which is one fourth times pi over two minus zero, because the sine of two pi is gonna be zero, minus zero minus zero, so this just becomes a fourth times pi over two, which is pi over eight, which works out to be d. All right, so that's number three. All right, so let's look at number four. Four gives us this interesting picture. It says, which of the following gives the area of the region enclosed by the loop of the graph for the polar curve? R is equal to four cosine of three theta. Okay, so the way I kind of figured this out is I looked at this and I said, let's give myself some theta values that make sense here and some r values. Well, I know at negative pi over three, this is gonna give me four cosine negative pi, and the cosine of negative pi is zero, so I'm gonna get zero. At zero, I get four cosine of zero, which is gonna give me four, and then at pi over three, this is gonna give me four cosine of pi, which gets me back to zero. And if I kind of think that through, at like negative pi over three, I'm at zero. And then at zero, I'm getting out to one, two, three, four. So I'm kind of making a loop that looks like this. When I'm at zero, so this is negative pi over three to zero. And then I come back to zero when I get to pi over three again, right? So by the time we get to pi over three here, I'm coming back to zero, that's that loop. So this is gonna give me one half, the integral from negative pi over three to pi over three times four cosine of three theta squared d theta. So a little bit of monkeying around with this. Um, if I square this, I'm gonna get 16 times the cosine squared of three theta d theta, 16 over two is gonna make that eight times negative pi over three to pi over three cosine squared three theta d theta, which I think is answer C. All right, so there you go, that's number four. All right, so let's look at problem number five. It says, which of the following is equal to the area of the region inside the polar curve? R is two cosine theta, right? And outside the polar curve, R is cosine theta. Okay, so if I think about this, um, if I let this work, an interesting thing happens. Okay, I'm going to choose theta values at 0, pi over 2, and pi. Okay, so if I have r equals 2 cosine theta, that's going to give me 2, 0, and negative 2. Okay, why do I only need that? Because if I'm at 0, 2, right? Pi over two takes me back to zero, okay? And then when I get back to pi, so this is the pi direction, but I'm gonna go negative two, puts me back there. So I've completed the loop at that point because I'm here at zero, I'm here at pi over two, I'm here at pi. So this circle is two cosine theta on the interval from zero to pi. Okay, you can play a similar game, like if I make theta and then I have r is cosine theta and I go zero pi over two and pi, this is gonna give me one. That's gonna be zero, that's gonna be negative one. So I'm gonna get a similar circle, 
but it's only going to have a diameter of one, right? Okay, so the irony of this is that, like, we could probably work out the answer to this, like, analytically, but um, that's not what they're asking us to do. So I get zero to pi here, right? So what I want is that shaded region. So this is going to be an integral, right? Half. And what am I doing? I'm going from 0 to pi. Both of these are sweeping from 0 to pi. All right? The outer area is going to be 2 cosine theta squared. The inner area is going to be cosine theta squared d theta. Okay, so that's half 0 to pi. And this is going to be 4 cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta d theta, which is like three halves times the integral from zero to pi of cosine squared theta d theta. Okay, so, well, if I take a look at this, I have some symmetry here, so all I really need to do is find the part of this and double it. So if I double that, this is half of this. So this would be three times zero to pi cosine squared theta d theta, which I believe is answer A. All right, so let's take a look at number six. Um, six is, find the area in, all right, so we're looking at number six, it wants the area Inside the polar curve, R is 4 sine theta. And outside the polar curve, R is 2. Well, this is easy. That's just a circle with radius 2. I'm going to do some discovering about this one. Um, let's throw some values in here. I used 0 uh, pi over 2 and pi again, which gives me 4 sine Theta gives me zero. Uh, at pi over two, I'm going to get four. At pi, I'm back to zero. So that's going to give me a full circle there. So this guy is zero out to four. And then back to zero. So this is four sine theta on the interval zero to pi, right? And then this guy is going to be r equals 2, but this one is on 0 to 2 pi, right? So what we want is the part that's inside here but outside that. So I need to know where this point is and that point is. So the way I handle that is I set 4 sine theta equal to 2, which gives me sine theta is equal to a half which means that the places where sine theta is equal to a half is when theta is equal to pi over six and five pi over six. Okay, so you can do a little bit with the unit circle there to try to convince yourself of that. So my area here is gonna be the integral from pi over six to five pi over six of four sine theta squared, that's the outer circle, minus two squared, which is the inner circle, which is d theta, which becomes one half the integral of pi over six to five pi over six of 16 sine squared theta minus four d theta, which I think is answer d. There you have it. All right, so let's look at problem number seven in the set here. Seven is, um, uh, there we go. It's which of the following expressions gives the total area enclosed by the polar curve R, oops, sorry about that. There we go. R
r equals sine squared theta. Um, so let's start kind of playing out the table here again. If I have theta equals r equals sine squared theta, right? It's theta and r sine squared theta. Let's pick the value 0 pi over 2, pi 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. This is going to give me 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, and 0, right? So that gives me, I think, the drawing that I need. 0, 0, pi over 2 comes out to 1, back to 0 at pi, down to 1 at 3 pi over 2, and back up at 0. So that's the full drawing, right? So I can be a little bit smart about this. Um, let's see, this is going to be half the integral from 0 to 2 pi of sine squared theta, right, d theta. Um, but, like, really all I need to do is find this and double it. So that's going to be from 0 to pi of sine, oh, that's that squared, to the fourth theta d theta, which works out to be letter d. So the answer for number seven was D. We're going to look at numbers eight, nine, and ten, which are calculator active problems. Looking at number eight, it pretty much sets up the problem for us. Um, it shows us the curve there, and it tells us that R is 2 theta plus cosine theta. Um, and it gives us the bounds of integration as being between 0 and pi. So all we have to do is say that the area under this curve is going to be 1 half, the integral from 0 to pi of 2 theta plus cosine theta squared d theta. And that's all the analysis that we need to do because this is a calculator active problem. So if I reach for the calculator, Okay, so let's clear this out so that I don't have to start from scratch here. Okay, so if I look at this problem, at this point I have one half. So we've got one half times math integral from zero to pi. Uh, pi, there we go, from 0 to pi, of 2, and we're not using theta, we're using x, plus, oops, plus, oh, sorry, let's get back into there, plus the cosine of x, there we go. Um, and then we're going to square this whole thing, so i got to put some parentheses oops, in there. Squared, right? And then this is dx, which gives me that final answer d around 17.456, I think is what the answer on the page is. All right, so let's look at number nine. It's also a calculator active problem. Um, let's figure out how this one's working. Uh, it's a slightly uh, more challenging graph. You have a circle that has a bit of a radius there, a radius of two, right? Circle's got a radius of two. And then we have this other curve R is 2 cosine of 3 theta, right? So if we kind of think about this, um, let's make that theta and R table again here. So there's theta, there's R, and get a couple of critical values here. I'm liking 0, pi over 6, pi over 3, uh, pi over 2, uh, 2 pi over 3, 5 pi over 6, and pi, 
So if you follow that out, that's like 0 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6. This works out to be 2. Uh, and then I get a 0 there because that's going to be pi over 2, cosine of pi over 2. This becomes negative 2, 0, back to 2, back to 0, back to negative 2. So if you kind of think about what's going on on the graph here, um, at 0, I'm out at 2. And then when I get to pi over 6, I'm crossing back to 0. Now when I'm up at pi over 3, that's going to cross out to be negative 2. Right, so this curve is like going like this. And then if I go from pi over 3 back to pi over 2, I'm here. And then to 2 pi over 3 is going to take me out this way again. And then, actually, I'm kind of a little bit off on my drawing there. Let me fix that a bit because, um, there we go. That's the one that's off. Um, it's actually kind of coming this way, right? So there we go. We've got that. And then we come back around here through there come back around this way. So here I'm at 0 pi over 6 uh, pi over 3 comes back to pi over 2 comes out to 2 pi over 3 comes back to 5 pi over 6 and then back out to 2 pi. So the curve is kind of going in this direction. Okay, so the judgment that I made here, and it looks like they made on the page, was instead of saying this is 0 and this is pi over uh, 6, is to make this 0 from negative pi over 6 around to pi over 6. So my integral for the one of the leaves is going to be from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6. Um, of the curve 2 cosine 3 theta squared d theta right so this is what I'm working with here um, if I use um, so that's one of the leaves right so three of the leaves is going to be three halves of that negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 of 2 cosine 3 theta squared d theta, right? And <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm stretching a circle with radius 2 around that. Well, the area of that circle is just 4 pi, right? So I'm going to take 4 pi to get the shaded part. I'm going to take 4 pi minus this integral. 3 halves integral negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 of 2 cosine 3 theta squared d theta. And again, at this point, we leave it up to the calculator, right? So let's see what happens if I do that. Okay, so I need 4 pi minus the integral from negative pi over 6 to pi over 6 of 2 times the cosine of 3x, and I need to square that, dx, right? And I think I have that right. So the answer there, oops, something's not right. Oh, wait, wait, I forgot the coefficient. Uh, back here, I need a... a three halves, right? In there. All right, so there we go. Now let's try it. And there we go, 9.425, which is one of the answer choices, which I believe is answer choice D. All right, so in this last one, we're comparing two curves. We're uh, working with R is 4 cosine theta. 
and theta is equal to 1. So let's kind of get an idea what this thing looks like. If you go with theta and r here, you're going to get at 0, r is 4. At pi over 2, r is 0. So this is basically going to get me 1, 2, 3, 4, right? Uh, something that looks like this, right? So this is 4 cosine theta on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. Now, if I extend this and say that this is theta equals 1, we're talking about this region here, which is what appears in the graph, right? So in order to get that shaded region, I need to find the area when the bounds run from theta equals 1 here, theta is 1, to down here, where theta is pi over 2. And all I care about is the area underneath this curve for cosine theta. So this is going to be 4 cosine theta squared d theta. And I forgot to put the asterisk on this problem because this is definitely a calculator active problem. So let's pull the calculator on that. All right, so this is 1 half uh, times the integral from 1 to now pi over 2 of 4 times the cosine of x. Oh, and I forgot the parentheses about this. So let's put a parenthesis all the way around there. Insert parenthesis there. And let's see, we're going to do the squared there, right? And this has to be dx. And lo and behold, that gets me approximately 0.465, which is answer choice B. All right, so there's your answers as I've got them worked out for the polar um, problems. And we'll keep going on in our little remote learning world here. All right, hope you're all well, safe and healthy, and I hope to hear from you soon.